Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Welcome to my kitchen. So in today's video, I am gonna be sharing with you nine things that I no longer purchase. I should say nine food items I no longer purchase from the grocery store. So these nine things are either something that I have started buying directly from farms or something that I have just started to make myself at home. There is nothing wrong with shopping at the grocery store at all. I'm not like against the grocery store. We still go to the grocery store every week to buy stuff, but there is definitely a difference in quality a lot of the times or a difference in um, like nutritional value. Um, you may be able to make more simple things at home yourself. You may be able to get better quality meat from a farmer, things like that. So in some cases, I've started buying these things directly from farms that are local to me. Um, so many of them nowadays ship. I actually did an entire video um, a few months back on how to shop from local farms, how to actually seek them out, where to find like these farmers, where to find these local places where you can shop directly from them. So definitely go watch that video if that's kind of like a new idea to you and this is, isn't something that you're already doing. Buying from farmers, making things at home myself with more simple ingredients um, that don't have, you know, additives or, you know, things that are going to make it last longer on the shelf, um, added ingredients like that. This has been um, like a mission of mine for a few years now. So I just want to encourage you if you're watching this video and you're like, I don't do any of this. I buy all of that stuff pre-made. I buy it just from the grocery store. Number one, you're not actually doing anything wrong, um, but there is always like room for improvement when it comes to nutrition, when it comes to quality, when it comes to food sourcing. And I just want to encourage you that this is so does not have to be something that happens overnight. In fact, if you try and do that, you're probably going to be so overwhelmed and you're just going to give up. So maybe pick one thing at a time um, and switch that over. Start buying it only from the from a farm or start making it yourself at home. And until that becomes just total habit and second nature, um, then you can move on to the next thing and so on and so forth. Okay, so without further ado, let's get on to my list. I have nine things. A couple of them have some caveats. If you guys know me, you know that I'm obviously a registered dietitian. I'm very passionate about nutrition, but I'm also very passionate about having balance and not seeking perfectionism when it comes to a healthy diet because that is something that is not necessarily going to serve you in the long term. If it's going to create stress in your body, stress is toxic and can be just as bad as eating like unhealthy food. So there's always room for flexibility. I'm not a perfectionist. However, these nine things are things that I pretty much no longer buy from the grocery store. Okay, the first on my list is actually the very first thing that I started purchasing directly from farmers instead of going to the grocery store, and that is meat. So I just walked over to my freezer and I pulled a couple of things out. So let's see, this is a um, pork shoulder roast to make like shredded barbecue pork, which is one of my favorite things, especially in the summer. This is a whole chicken. Um, we buy different cuts of beef. We buy tons and tons of ground beef. Um, that's one of like the main things that my kids love to eat. So we almost solely buy all of our meat directly from farms. Um, I talked about in that video um, about how to shop locally from farmers. I shared um, a few of the ones that I personally shop from that are local to me. They do ship though. Um, I can link those down below as well. Your Family Farmer is one that I love, um, also called the Family Cow. Um, I love Grandview Farm. They're in Maryland. They ship to me, um, or they do like home delivery. Um, anyway, so I buy meat straight from the farmers because I want high quality meat. I want um, you know meat that is organically raised, that is um, allowed to graze on pasture and eat grass. I want to support farmers who are regenerative, meaning they are, you know, actually taking care of the soil and the grass and the land that they are raising these animals on so that it can continue to raise um, and um, like feed healthy animals for many years to come instead of just ruining the soil with chemicals or allowing the cows to just completely destroy it or whatever it is. I really want to support farmers who are doing that work. So that is why I purchase from them. Also, everything is always just so high quality. It is so tasty. And again, it's really important to me to um, buy meat from farmers who are 
raising it in the way that if I were to do it myself, like that's what I would want to do. Um, now I do still love a good old pack of chicken breasts, organic chicken breasts from Costco. That's like literally the one thing that I buy outside of um, farmers. Again, I'm not perfect um, and that I'm not necessarily aiming to be but about 99% of the meat that we now consume as a family comes directly from farmers and I usually just place orders online and they ship it frozen to my door. We've got a big deep freezer in um, the barn where we store all of it and then I just pull stuff out as I'm going to cook with it each week. Okay, the next thing I no longer buy from the grocery store is shredded cheese. I purchased shredded cheese from the grocery store for many, many, many years. I mean, I guess my whole adult life up until probably about a year ago or so. Um, you know, my mom always bought shredded cheese. I always, it was just part of my weekly grocery haul. Shredded cheese for, you know, topping pizza or burrito bowls or skillets or whatever else. Um, but I stopped buying shredded cheese for a couple of reasons. One, when you buy, I just buy blocks of cheese. These are actually from um, my local grocery store. This is the Sierra Nevada brand. I typically don't buy these little blocks. I typically buy big whopping five pound blocks of cheese that I either um, I'll order from Azure Standard and it's actually the same brand, Sierra Nevada, or even better is I'll order, I actually just placed an order to be here in a few days um, from one of those local farms I was talking about. Um, they also have the big five pound blocks and I will, they'll just ship it to me. Again, it's frozen, you just thaw it. Um, and they last, like for, I've never had one go moldy in the fridge. That's a question I always get asked. We use it within like a month or so, it has never been moldy. Anyway, so I'll buy the big blocks, but then I use those and just shred them down. I have a cheese grater, just a simple box grater that I use. I just shred as I go. If you want, you can shred a bunch at once. If you are someone who likes to prep ahead of time, you can um, use a food processor. You can um, use, you can buy like fancy gadgets where you crank them and it, it grinds the cheese for you. But I stopped buying shredded cheese from the grocery store for two reasons, I meant to say that, still haven't gotten to that point yet, but I, one, the flavor is incredible. Like the very first time, we make sourdough pizza almost every Friday night. The very first time I made pizza with shredded cheese from the block, the flavor, I was like, this, I mean, the shredded cheese, literally, the shredded mozzarella I would buy has literally no taste in comparison to this. Like it, it's just a mouthfeel. There is no taste to it. This, on the other hand, it's just richer, it has a deeper flavor, it's so much more satisfying, it's so much more yummy. Um, but also, when you're buying shredded cheese, it is going to have like anti-caking ingredients added to it. So that the cheese, because if you shred cheese yourself and then you stick it in the fridge, you know that it kind of clumps together. And um, so they'll add things to it so that it stays separate. Now this isn't necessarily the end of the world. This isn't like a super toxic ingredient. I mean, I guess it depends on what they're using. Sometimes it's just potato starch, but it doesn't melt as well. So when you shred it yourself just from the block, it doesn't have any of those anti-caking agents on it. It melts so beautifully. It's just a whole different ball game and it's so delicious. The third thing we no longer buy from the grocery store is milk. We get milk directly from um, a local farmer. We can technically order it, but there's actually an Amish market near us that carries um, milk from one of the local farms that I do purchase from. So we usually just get it there. This is raw milk, controversial. Um, I We've been drinking raw milk for a few years now. Um, we probably would have started it even sooner than that, but we used to live in Delaware and it was just harder to come by there. Um, in Pennsylvania, it's very easy to purchase. But anyway, so we drink raw milk. I'm not gonna go into raw milk in this video because it's not what it's about. I will leave a podcast episode down below. That's probably one of the best discussions, deep dives on raw milk that I have personally come across. Um, you may not be comfortable drinking raw milk and that is okay. I am perfectly comfortable with it after vetting the source. This is one of the farms, there's two farms near us that I really like. Um, that we get it from, either one, I feel their standards are very high and I'm very comfortable purchasing from them. They're small farms, again, regenerative farmers. They take very good care of their animals um, and they take very like cautious care of the whole milking process. Um, so that's what we drink. Um, we'll never go back. We used to buy, you know, organic milk from the store, but if you'll notice, um, like the expiration dates on organic milk 
are so much longer than non-organic milk. And you may be wondering why that is. And that's because organic milk is like ultra pasteurized, meaning they heat it even more because for farmers to, for, to make organic, or I'm sorry, to produce organic milk, um, it's not, it costs a lot more money. So in order to actually make like a decent profit, they have to have it have a longer shelf life. Um, so that's kind of that in a nutshell, but so we used to buy that. And then once I learned more, um, completely switched to raw milk, that's what we drink now. We're thriving on it. Um, again, it may not be for everyone. I'm not telling you that you have to drink raw milk, but I do encourage you to do some research, see if you're comfortable with it. And if so, look for a, you know, a reputable source in your area. If not, then continue to buy your milk from the grocery store because it's obviously totally your choice. Okay, the fourth thing I no longer buy from the grocery store 99% of the time is bread. So for the longest time we would buy sandwich bread from the grocery store. One of my tips is if you're going to buy sandwich bread from the grocery store is to go to the bakery section because in the bread aisle, those like super squishy plastic wrapped breads are so full of ingredients. Like, I mean, it's a literal paragraph. I'm not saying that there's not like okay options in there, but they tend to be pretty high in sugar. Like they literally taste sweet once you stop eating that bread. And then if you try it, you're like, this tastes like a, like a pastry almost. Like it's very sweet. It doesn't have to be sweet. Bread doesn't have to be sweet, um, but it is typically sweetened. Um, and there's just a lot of ingredients in there. There's like extra gluten added. There's usually processed oils added. Like there's just a lot that I just personally don't want to be feeding my family on a regular basis. Every once in a while, it's not something I worry about, but week in and week out, it's just not what I want to feed um, my family. So if you're gonna, like the next step up would be bakery section, but you can also obviously bake your own bread at home, which probably sounds so intense and involved and like old fashioned homemaker, <laughs> but it really is not that difficult. I've done a whole video on my sourdough sandwich bread that I make on a weekly basis. I do it once a week, I bake two loaves, and that's enough for us for a week. Um, if, you know, if we had a bigger family, I would just bake, you know, four at once instead of two. Um, and you know, that way I'm only doing it once a week. It's really not that big of a deal and it's a pretty hands off process, but it makes really delicious, um, sourdough sandwich bread. It's not super sour. The one that I make, it doesn't crumble and fall apart. Um, it's pretty soft and fluffy. It's not what you're going to get in the grocery store because again, that is not just bread. That is like altered, um, like modernized. It's just, it's not real bread. It's like a bread product. But when you start to make bread at home, you'll realize that it's a, it's, it's a very different thing. Um, but anyway, so I love that recipe. It's the one that is like tried and true for me. We've used it over and over and over week in and week out for many months now. Um, so if you want to watch that video, I'll link it down below. The next thing I no longer buy at the grocery store is mayonnaise. So I always used to buy, I would never buy like, um, just like regular mayo from the store because they're typically made with a highly processed oil, like for example, soy, soybean oil or canola oil. And I just try and avoid those as much as I can. Um, but what I would buy is the avocado oil mayo. And I would typically buy it from Costco because it's a much more affordable, like the little tiny jar you get in the grocery store is like a million dollars. So I would buy it there and that was fine. We always had it in our fridge, you know, that was what we used. But then I learned how, literally how easy it is to make your own mayo. Um, and I've just kind of like never looked back. I've never bought that mayo again. It's, you can whip it up in five minutes. Like it's not something we necessarily like always have in the fridge. It's just kind of like when we need mayo, I just make a little batch real quick. It makes about a cup each time I make it. Um, it's just one egg, um, a cup of oil. I use avocado oil and a little bit of, vinegar, like apple cider vinegar, a little bit of salt and pepper, a little bit of lemon juice if I have it. It's so, so simple. It comes together super quick and it is so tasty. Not only is the flavor really nice, but the texture of it is wonderful. Like compared to the gloppy, thick, like oil separating out <laughs> mayonnaise, like the avocado oil mayonnaise I used to buy, which was a, you know, it was a good quality brand. I'm not, I'm not knocking it, but homemade is just so much better, like far tastier and it's so easy to make. So to me, it's like a no brainer. And also it costs way less money because 
We always have avocado oil. We have a plethora of eggs because we have chickens. Um, and avocado oil is like, you know, it's, it's up there in price point. So that is one thing that we've started making at home and never looked back. Next on my list is granola. So I've got a little bit here. We clearly need to make some more. We just about finished this jar. Granola is another one of those things that like I used to buy from the store, but I was very picky about the brand and the ingredients. Um, I wouldn't just buy any old granola. I would always like make sure it checked out as far as what I wanted to see on the ingredient list. So, you know, no um, processed oils, not a ton of sugar. Um, and of course, you know, I would end up buying like the most expensive granola <laughs> in the store because I wanted high quality ingredients. Now, I never attempted to make my own granola until like a few months ago and I was like, you've gotta be kidding me, this is so easy. Like why did I ever spend like $12 on a bag of granola? So it's so, so, so simple. It's, you know, I use like oats and um, I don't remember off the top of my head, coconut oil, um, a little bit of vanilla, some maple syrup to sweeten it, a little bit of salt. Um, and I usually just make it plain with, I'll chop up, what's in here, I think? walnuts or pecans i don't know i usually chop up some kind of nut i think it's pecans in here and um and you just throw it all in the oven um at like a low-ish temperature and you cook it for like 45 minutes to an hour until it crisps up it's so easy also it will make your house smell incredible like so 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 good like you will just you'll just love it. It's just, it's like one of the best smelling things I've ever baked in my house. And it comes together so quick and my kids love to help me make it. They love to help like stir it all up. It really is so simple and it's delicious. And it's, I store it in a jar. It stays very crunchy and very crisp, even if it's like a few weeks old. And it's just one, I want another one of those things where I'm like, why did I ever spend so much money on this at the store, <laughs> like it's so not necessary. And these are all ingredients I have at home. I always have like organic sprouted oats. I buy them from Costco at a very reasonable price and a very big bag. I always have coconut oil. I always have like vanilla and salt. Um, I typically always have some kind of nut on hand that I can chop up. So it's not something I really need to like think a whole lot about because I usually just have those ingredients already in my pantry and it's so easy to whip up. You can like throw it all together in five, 10 minutes and then it just bakes in your oven for a little while, pretty hands off, and it's so tasty. The ingredients are, and it costs so much less money. Next on my list is yogurt. So I have started to make my own plain yogurt at home. Um, it's been a little bit, a little while now. If you have an Instant Pot, it is like, a total no-brainer because it's so easy to do. You don't have to worry about keeping it at a certain temperature. It's just gonna do it all itself. And it's just, it's very a hands-off process. Now I will give you a caveat here. Again, perfection is not necessarily my goal. And we do still buy like kids yogurt from the store. My kids love like the Siggy's um, yogurt. It's like strawberry banana. That's my favorite ingredient wise for them. We do buy like the Stonyfield one too. It's like in like the squeeze things. They love those. And I am not gonna like steal that joy from them and be like, you have to eat this plain yogurt in a bowl, which they will do like with granola and like if I put maple syrup in it. Um, but that's also more involved. It's a lot easier just to hand them a, a yogurt pouch. I mean, I, like I'm a busy mom, I get it. So I do still buy those. We definitely buy those in the grocery store. But otherwise, I always used to buy like, a big thing of Siggy's like vanilla or sometimes just plain or whatever. That was always on my list was like a big thing of yogurt and I don't buy that anymore. I just make it myself um, and it's much cheaper and I don't have to, I mean, not. I always bought a high quality one with good ingredients from grass fed cows um, that didn't have a ton of sugar or anything like that. Um, but when you make it at home, it's just literally milk and cultures. So when I um, go to make yogurt, we're obviously pretty low. I'll literally just take a tea or a tablespoon out of this existing yogurt. I'll put it in my milk in my instant pot and that will make a new batch of yogurt. So I can just make it over and over and over again. You can actually buy yogurt starters um, if you wanna start doing this at home. I love cultures for health. Or you can literally just buy from the grocery store. You can buy one like container of it has to be plain yogurt and it has to have the live active cultures in it because sometimes they like may cook it afterwards heat it afterwards and the cultures might not necessarily be there you have to make sure it says live active cultures on it and that will totally work too if you are more of a fan of like greek yogurt or icelandic skier i think is how you say it 
um, then you can just take this yogurt, the same yogurt that you're gonna make in your Instant Pot or whatever, and you just put it on like a cheesecloth and let it like all the way strain out all the liquid, and then that will make a thicker, much more concentrated yogurt, which is gonna be higher in protein, which is nice because it's more concentrated down. Um, so if that's what you like, you can still easily make that at home. It's just one extra step. The eighth thing that I no longer buy from the grocery store is sauerkraut. So if you know me, you know I love me some sauerkraut. This is one of the first things, aside from like meat, that I started making myself. I did a video here on my channel a few years ago now on how to make it. It is like stupid simple to make your own sauerkraut. And it's, again, it's one of those things that I would buy it from the store and I wanted a, like one that tasted really good. I didn't want one that had sugar added, not necessarily because I'm like against sugar, but I just hate that. I think sauerkraut that is sweetened tastes disgusting. So if you've ever tried that sauerkraut and you're like, that's horrendous. I don't know how you eat that Becca. Maybe you tried sweetened sauerkraut because I think it's so gross. Like literally can't take one bite, but regular sauerkraut without any sugar added. Um, to me, it tastes almost like pickles. So if you like pickles, you might want to give this a try. So I make my own. It's so easy, but I used to buy packs of it. And for like a little pack of sauerkraut, I mean, it's been years, so it's probably even more expensive now, but it'd be like $7 for like a little pack of sauerkraut. You can buy a big cabbage that will make like four times that amount for like a dollar. <laughs> so it's, it's like insane, the price difference. Um, and it's, it's like pretty foolproof, foolproof to make at home. So it's just cabbage that I slice up, I chop with my knife. Um, in the video that I did a few years ago, I used to actually use a food processor to process it down pretty fine. Um, I don't even do that anymore. I'm even more like quick and dirty about it. I literally just chop it up with my knife. I feel like the taste difference is really like barely noticeable. Um, I don't think it's worth hauling out the food processor and cleaning it and all of that. So I literally just chop it up. You add, um, I do about one tablespoon of salt per like big head of cabbage. You just sprinkle it on, I mix it all up, I let it sit for a few minutes to help like some of the liquid start to draw out. And then with your hands, or you can get like a masher tool, um, which are handy but they're not necessary, you just like grind it down, you squeeze it down until it really releases all of that water. Cabbages are very high in water content and you, so there's no brine, you're not creating a brine, it's literally just you put salt on the cabbage until it draws the water out and that creates the brine for you and then you just go ahead, you stuff it all in a jar, you make sure it's like below the liquid line. I do use weights on top of mine. Um, and then you just sit it on your counter for like a week or two. And it's really that easy. Just keep it out of direct, you don't want any sunlight on it. I usually stick mine in a cupboard um, or else it'll taste, it, it will, it'll be funky. So you don't want that. Um, but it's really so easy to make. It's so tasty and I love like sauerkraut. It's just so easy to throw on like anything. Just to add a fermented food, to add a little crunch, add a little veg. It's just so versatile and I add it to like, I could add it to like honestly, most dishes that I eat and it's like always a welcome addition. Plus it is wonderful for your gut. Okay, the last thing on my list, and there might be some other things that I am just total mom brain like forgetting about, but the last one is flour. Um, and this is another caveat one. So I grind my own wheat berries to make my own flour at home for the most part. However, I do still buy all purpose like organic, unbleached all-purpose flour. I buy it in bulk, so it's much cheaper. And I usually get it through Azure Standard because the shipping is way cheaper than shipping me like a 50 pound bag of flour in the regular mail. That's like astronomical. Um, so I do have all-purpose flour that I buy and I do use it. Um, I love all-purpose flour to feed my starter because it's just quick and it's easy. Um, and there's certain things that I like to use all-purpose flour for, like with baking. But for the most part, for my breads, for pizza, um, most of the things I use flour for, muffins, I will use um, fresh ground flour. So I have, it's called a Nutramil Harvest. I'll link it down below. It's definitely an investment, but it's one of the best investments as far as upping nutritional value um, in the food that you're creating. So I've done a whole video on it and I'll link it here. I'm not gonna like go into full detail here because I've already talked about it in, in length, or great lengths. Um, but when you grind wheat berries fresh, all the nutrients are still there. As soon as they're ground and they're exposed to oxygen, um, they will start to oxidize. The nutrients and the enzymes and the fats will start to break down. So flour that you're buying on the shelf 
could have been months old by that point. So it will have already lost a lot of its nutritional value. It's not like it's devoid of nutritional value. Um, however, when you're doing, when you're grinding it fresh at home, it is more, I mean, I don't necessarily like this word, but I think it helps, the term is helpful for people. It's more like along the lines of like a superfood. Like it has so much more nutrition, higher antioxidants, um, higher, you know, nutrient density. Um, the fats aren't going to be necessarily oxidized. So it's just a much higher, nutritive value end product than what you'd be buying in the bags on the store. Now, does that mean I still don't buy bagged flour? I obviously do, but I do love grinding it fresh myself at home and I do use that most of the time. So instead of buying whole wheat flour from the store, I now grind it fresh at home and it's one of like my favorite kitchen appliances. I just remembered one more thing. <laughs> Mom brain is so real. And I don't know how this didn't make my list because this is like actually the very first thing that we stopped buying from the grocery store and that is eggs. So we have our own laying hens in our backyard. We have, God, so many now. Chicken math is so real. I think we have like 27 chickens, which is just escalated so quickly. <laughs> Never thought I would have 27 chickens in my backyard, but we do. Um, and anyway, so we get eggs from our chickens and it's one of the best things ever. If you can have chickens where you live, I could not recommend it more. I've done videos on bringing chicks home and how to take care of them and how to set up your coop and all of that. It's so much fun. They are such a good time, but from a food standpoint, they give us the most beautiful eggs. And if you have chickens, you know, when you crack into one of those eggs, they are just vastly different than what you get from the grocery store. Like I haven't seen a yellow egg in, I don't know, three years because like the yolks from our chickens are orange. Like they are so different. And when you actually cook with them, like the vibrant, like orange yellow color of like the scrambled eggs or the quiche or whatever it is that you're making, um, it's just so different. Like when I go to a restaurant and I order scrambled eggs, I'm like, these are almost white, like they look so different. Um, so as far as nutrition quality goes, fresh eggs that you know are from chickens that are allowed to graze on grass and eat bugs and have this really varied diet, um, it, it's just, it's almost, like a, it's almost like a different food. Now you can obviously buy higher quality eggs from the store that are now like a million dollars, I think, because of the <laughs> egg shortage or whatever, which I'm not totally in tune with because I don't buy eggs. But I will tell you, um, there's been like, a, like in the winter this year, I think that we literally bought like a two, maybe like two or three cartons of eggs because we were just like so low because they don't lay as much in the winter. Um, and I bought like the best like pasture raised eggs and they were still like literally paled in comparison to the eggs that we get from our chickens. So, I mean, I'm not saying you have to like go out and buy chickens. That's the only way to have super healthy eggs, but you can buy directly from farmers. And that is gonna be the closest thing to super fresh eggs like from your backyard if you were to have your own chickens. So that is something that I would um, you know, encourage you to look into. Maybe find a farmer in your area that has a ton of laying hens. Maybe it's just like a, a family that has too many eggs that you can get eggs from in like the laying season or a farmer nearby that has a full egg laying operation that you can buy eggs from on a more regular basis. But that is going to be the closest thing to having your own backyard chickens. And if you can have your backyard, own backyard chickens, do it. Okay, so that is it for this video. It ended up being 10 things that I no longer buy from the grocery store. Gotta love it. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you learned something new, if you feel encouraged by this video, I'd absolutely love for you to share it with someone who you think would also be encouraged by it. Um, that is one of the ways that my channel grows and I can help other people with my nutrition knowledge. But thank you guys so much for watching this video. Again, if you have any requests for future videos, please leave them in the comments down below. I always read them. They are are so helpful to me. I really value that feedback because I want to make videos that you guys want to watch. But that is all I have for this one. Thank you again for watching and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye!